This is an old Street Fighter. Still has some of the leftover artwork, but it's been uh, converted to an X-Men. Um, but what uh, somebody did was put an old monitor in. This should have a little bit larger monitor. Let's see. There's that. But that's not important. Is the monitor going to come on at all? At all? They're warming up. Looks dead to me. Okay, this kind of cabinet, you don't access the monitor from the back. There is a little bit of an access here, but you can see it's just barely bigger than my hand. So, and this one, to work on the monitor, you're really supposed to pull it out from the front. Nineteen. 84 and it says Atari down there so I know it was a vertical game you see uh, one up high score two up one up there so it's got one game here one game here tilt it this way there's another game so nasty build up on that transformer there at least I think it's a transformer see that looks like something from under the ocean man that's horrible and that could just be, um, it almost looks like grease. Let's wiggle this off. Take a look at the other side. There we go. But uh, I don't see anything that looks too horrible, but it all generally looks disgusting. See, the red is all the way on the right. Let's wiggle this guy out. God. Look at how nasty that is. I mean, it looks like it looks like an auto part. All right, let's get this cleaned up. Okay, I got some alcohol. And a brush. Let's try this one. There we go. So I'm going to do that. You can see how much of a difference that made. Especially right here where there's nothing printed. You can see how dark this area is and that's just because it got so darn hot. So I'm just expecting inspecting the whole board. And uh, this fuse looks a little suspect. So I might take that out and test it. It looks like um, a fried bulb inside, you know, how it kind of gets that weird smoke cloud on the glass. But on the back, I'm seeing a lot of um, cold solder joints. And you can see, where's one? Right there. There's just that line around. Okay, let me show you what's been going on. I've just been fixing up some cold joints and touching up some solder here and there. I always found this part of the board where to go right here to be very curious. You can see there's a fuse wire going across. And remember when I found that fuse that I thought was bad. Um, that's where it went across. So I disconnected, where is it? There it is. I disconnected one side. So now I'm going to be able to test it and see if somebody just put a wire across. So I touched these two probes, didn't get a beep, and so I know that fuse is bad. So what I'm going to do is put on this one. This is one that I had. Now it's not an exact match, obviously, as the one that was on the board. So let's take a look at what this says. Hopefully it shows up in the camera. Yeah, I think you can see it if I spin it. Okay. So you can see it says right here, it starts off 1.25A. So that's a 125 volt fuse at 1.25 amps. This one says 250 volts. That's out of focus. Here we go. 250 volts and 1.25 AH. So what does the AH mean? This is a ceramic fuse. And the H means ceramic, but, you know, it's kind of redundant because you can obviously tell it's not a glass fuse. So if you see an, um, an H, that means ceramic. If you see an L, 
that means it's glass. But the other thing is you might see a T and that's a timer fuse or slow blow is what they're more commonly called. And if there's an F on it, it's a fast blow, quick blow fuse. The difference in these also, the voltage, you can use a 250 volt fuse to replace a 125. This can handle up to 250 volts. This can handle up to 125. And that's not um, what's going to cause problems. You just, with your board, it's if you have a higher amperage that's allowed to go through, that will mess up. If the board had a 250 fuse, volt fuse, and you put in a 125, that's obviously not going to work. So this will work, and uh, this didn't have any standoffs on it, and so I just put my own on. So I'm going to take off this weird job somebody did. And here it is, all cleaned up. This is miles better than it was before. And uh, hopefully everything still works. You know, we gave it a good soaking, but sometimes you knock things around too much and uh, it messes stuff up. So there's the new ceramic fuse that we put in. That should be just fine. And we're gonna test this out now. Eventually when I find a, a right replacement tube, that tube is gone, but we're gonna drop this back in, turn it on, see how it works right now. I don't see any activity on there. So this fuse that I installed is bad. Now did it pop? I don't know. Because it's a ceramic fuse so I can't see through any glass to see if it fried or if it was disconnected, which I think was the problem. When I was putting this together, um, one of the end caps of the fuse had moved and uh, twisted around and I think I disconnected it. So I think what happened was I installed this not working so anyway so I'm gonna order some glass fuses because that was my last fuse of that um, rating anyway so I'm gonna order some online I think it's like 10 of them for $1.70 and that includes shipping so they'll take a while to arrive anyway we'll jump back in, into this project later when the fuses come all right so let's get back up to speed I ordered some fuses because it turns out the one I installed was a bad one I think I um, I damaged it installing it anyway and I also put some fuse holders in one thing you're going to want to make sure you do if you have trouble with that fuse and it's out and you discharge your monitor you might think you're safe but this cap here holds one heck of a charge so I took uh, I pulled out the board clipped it to the ground and uh, shorted it and it blew a massive spark so you're gonna have a fireworks show and you'd rather do that when it's controlled um, I bet, rather than uh, have it on your skin. Anyway, so save yourself um, a bit of pain and discharge that cap before you work on any of this because without the fuse there, it holds its charge. Um, let's see what else. So I put in some fuse holders, got some fuses, and uh, actually I got one amp fuse that calls for a 1.5 amp fast blow. It, um, the original fuse was one no 1.25 amps fast blow at 125. I put in a 1 amp fast blow at 250 volts. And uh, from what I read that should be fine. So I'm going to attach all these wires again. We'll uh, install it back in the cabinet and see if this works. Unbelievably, I don't know how many years have passed. We're ready to hook this up. I forgot all about this whole project until I saw the footage on my um, hard drive. So so I can't even remember really what I did to this thing. I think we uh, just did the cap kit and washed. I don't know how many other repairs. Anyway, let's hook this up and see how the screen works. I got my uh, power supply there. I'm going to plug it in first, see if we get any Niklo. Then we'll, um, this is a Street Fighter board we'll use to see if we get signal and all that, test all that. So let's just see Niklo for now. I got to say, I'm always nervous when I do this. I just expect sparks and smoke. Especially since I don't remember what we did last. It's been too long. All right, so here we go. Yeah, sounded like a normal TV. I hear the hum. I don't see glow, but the lights are on. I hear a nice hum. I. Oh, is that a glow? Let's take a look. Yeah, we got neck glow. It's very faint, but it is glowing. All right, let's hook up Street Fighter. All 
All right, look at that. Doesn't look good, but I'll take that. You know what, we're missing red. All right, well, next up is to find out what's going on here and what I need to fix to bring the red back. That'll be a whole different video and I will do that later, but it's back on. I don't, don't even remember what the problem was with this or what we were doing. Gosh, see you whenever.